There is finally a Tickfinity app for TikTok Live phone streamers and mobile gamers. This app gives you some of Tickfinity's most popular widgets. That's things like like and follow overlays and a chat overlay. And it also gives you both sound alerts and text to speech. To start with, just check on your TikTok app that you have the mobile gaming option. Or if you just want to use the sound alerts and your phone cameras, look for the device camera option. If you don't have it, a free to join agency can help you unlock that. I'll put a link in the description. And then of course, we need to download the app on both Android or iOS. I'll put that in the description as well. It is called TikStream. And once you've opened the app, sign in with the TikTok account that you'll be going live with. If you're gonna use this for multiple accounts, you'll have to log in and out of the correct account each time. Once you're logged in, you'll get a brief overview of the app, but of course, we'll overview the whole app in this video as well. And of course, you should allow the permissions. As I mentioned earlier, there's really two main uses for this. The first is people playing mobile games from their tablet or phone. In that scenario, you would set up the sound alerts and then you would switch from the TickStream app to whatever mobile game you're playing. The second scenario is people just streaming from their phone using their phone cameras. And that's the scenario where we can show the widgets on the screen like goal follower, chat, etc. For both of those scenarios, the sound alerts and the text to speech will work. So let's start on this page. And if you're not on this page, just tap sound mode in the bottom left. And let's set up a sound when somebody follows. So it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna tap add new sound alert where it says no event selected. I'm gonna tap on it. And I now have a number of different events. If you can't see this list of gifts, you might have to go live once. And you would do that by pressing the play button in the top right or using the live mode. Anyway, I'm just gonna tap onto follow and we're gonna play a sound whenever somebody follows. So I'll click on no sound selected. And I believe just as Tickfinity has, this is the my instance sound library. So it's just full of popular sounds. So you can type what you want or you can just select a popular sound. So I'll just choose the vine boom sound. A few other basic settings here, but we probably don't need to change them. So I'll just tap out and you can see now it's gonna play the vine boom sound when somebody follows. So you could just keep adding other sound alerts. Again, for example, you can play a sound based on a specific gift. So in this example, I'm just rapidly setting up a specific sound for a GG gift. And of course, that's just gonna help incentivize people to send you more gifts. Let's set up the text to speech now. And of course, we'll just start by enabling it. And you can play around with some of the general settings. Usually it's the voice one that people are interested in. And you can go through and preview all of the different voices that you might wanna use. Now it's up to you who uses the text to speech, but it can be abused by people who are not paying to support you. So unless you have a small stream, I recommend personally that you just make it so that people who are paying to support you can use it. And of course your mods as well. And of course, somebody who's paying is a subscriber or a gifter. And then further down, just choose how the text to speech is activated. If you want every single message to be read out loud by the text to speech, it's any comment, or you can make it so they have to type a dot slash or either if you don't want every message read out loud. I think most of these default settings are fine. I might be tempted to increase the queue length. So let's just increase it to 20, just in case a lot of messages get backed up. And then we're really set up already. So if you're a mobile gamer, what you would do is you would press the play button in the top right corner, and then you would just swipe out of the tick stream app and go in any other app. And of course you'd go live on TikTok using mobile gaming. If you just head to the end of the video, I'll show you how to do that. And if you're wanting to go live just with the device camera option on your phone as well, then you're ready to go live with that as well. You would just go live with device cameras from the TikTok app then press the play button in TickStream and switch back to device cameras inside the TikTok app. Anyway, let's look at the edit mode, which is for people using their phone cameras to live stream and we can add some widgets on top to help with engagement. And just briefly, I have a private community of like-minded live streamers and content creators. The whole goal of the Live Success Academy is to help you build a stronger community in your live stream, which will help you make more money. We have weekly calls. We have plenty of private videos to help you grow. And we have a community tab with daily posts and best practices. We also have exclusive discounts and advice about things like stream keys, Tickfinity, Live Studio, etc. I'll put that in the description. So if you're a phone streamer, I recommend you set up the sound alerts and the text to speech if you want it, but also now tap onto edit mode. And as you can see, my camera is now displaying. Just firstly, along the top, you can flip the camera. You can turn the camera off briefly if you wanna turn it off and you can control the flash. But let's focus on the fun stuff, which is adding in alerts. 
So you can probably see on the left hand side, I can press this drop down to expand the widgets library and we will be able to reorder the sources later. But let's just start by whatever appears at the bottom. And the more widgets I add here, they're going to layer on top of each other. We'll be able to change that later, but just as a best practice, we'll add the bottom layer first. And if you choose to do that, the bottom layer would usually be the Emojify widget or the stream bodies. So let's just tap on the Emojify widget and add that in. You might just be able to see at the very top somewhere here and at the very bottom, a little outline. So you can see how big that widget is. You can pinch to resize it. So I can pinch to resize it. I can also drag it around. You can use two fingers as well if you want. And if you're using this widget, I like to just place it at the bottom of the screen. That widget, by the way, basically detects whenever somebody puts an emoji in the chat and shows the emoji on their profile picture. Anyway, let's look at more widgets. So I'm going to tap on the widget library again. Now let's add some of the more common ones. Let's add a goal widget in. And you can see it's now popped up in the middle of the screen. And again, you can use one or two fingers to resize this. I'm going to bring it to the top of the screen and then I'm just going to use two fingers to shrink it down. I'll place it where I want and then I can tap on it to customize it. So if you tap on metric, this is where you can change it to a like, share, follow, coins or viewers goal. And you can add multiple if you want, but just for this, we'll add only one and we'll make it a follower goal. You can then set a target number of followers. So let's set it to a target of 20 followers. Of course, depending on your stream size, tweak that up or down. And if you choose to add a title, we'll see what this does. What it does is it adds a little bit of text before the goal. So you can now see that I've got it saying goal 10 out of 20 follows. If we just scroll down through some of these settings, you can basically just change the design of the goal overlay to make it look the way you want. And when you're done, I'm just going to swipe down out of it. And my follow goal is now showing. And it's just a process of repeatedly adding more widgets. So if you want to show recent gifters, for example, you can tap onto the gift widget and you can see it's added it quite big onto my screen. So of course, I'm going to use two fingers just to shrink it down a little bit and I'll just drag it into place, place it wherever I want. And you can see you've got these nice blue guidelines to have things properly aligned. And once again, I can tap on the gift widget and change anything I want. For example, if I don't want low value gifts like roses appearing, I could change this to, for example, 99. Hide entries after is set seconds by the way it's not the number of entries and again once you're done you would just swipe down and it will after a few seconds show you a little preview of how it works now let's look at how to both delete them and how to reorder them i mentioned earlier it's using a layer system similar to how live studio obs or streamlab sources work so to change what layer each widget is on just hold it down so i'm holding down the gift widget here you can see on the left this little icon appears and i'm just dragging it down the screen and now i've got it on the bottom layer and I just let go and it's now on the bottom layer. So if I now drag this down, it's now beneath the Emojify widget. So if I try and drag it now, I'm actually moving the Emojify widget instead. Looks like it's uh, bugging out a bit here. Anyway, I've just closed and reopened the app to fix that. And let's look at how to delete things. Well, that's really simple and intuitive. You just hold on to what you want to delete and then drag it down into this little delete button that appears at the bottom and just keep dragging things that you want to delete. So of course, we've got this all now set up. What about actually going live? Now, just briefly before I show you the mobile gaming option, you can just go live using the device camera option, but this means you can only use the sound alerts and the text-to-speech, and of course, it'll just show your phone camera. So you don't get any of the widgets with that, but if you want to do that, just go live using the device camera settings on the TikTok app. Switch back to TikStream and press the play button in the top right corner of the sound alerts page, and then just go back to your TikTok app and your sound alerts and text to speech will be working. And of course, that is useful for things like live battles. I nearly forgot to edit that part into this video. Anyway, let's go back to the previous version of Harry, which will show you mobile gaming. So when you're actually ready to go live, firstly, just check that your phone is in do not disturb mode. That will make sure that no notifications show while you're live. We're going to be using mobile gaming and sharing our phone screen. Again, you can either use this to show any mobile games you're playing or show the device camera through the TickStream app. Most important thing here is make sure you are in portrait mode. So of course, I'm not actually going to go live, but press the go live button and it will start the mobile gaming screen sharing. And then what you'll do is you'll just switch into the TickStream app. You'll either press the play button in the top right to enable the sound mode. Or of course, if you're using your camera, you would switch into capture mode and it will start reading all the data in your live stream. For example, it will start showing an accurate follower goal. 
Of course, when you're ready to end the stream, you will just end it back inside the TikTok app. And again, keep in mind throughout this whole time, you are sharing every single thing on your phone screen. That includes just something like this when you're switching between the TikTok app and the TikStream app. Again, just keep that in mind. The viewers can see everything on your phone. If you're looking for more help on how to use TikStream, I'll put the Tickfinity Discord in the description. Just make sure you use the correct channel. And speaking of Tickfinity, if you are streaming from a computer, I'll put my full computer Tickfinity guide on screen now.